people. It's one of my favorite things to do. Waves, <laughs> sound checking in front of my audience. There's no thing glamorous. Yeah. Safe on a straight line, waiting around to hit a green light. You got a big surprise if you'll open your eyes. Buried my wreckage in a graveyard, driving faster than a NASCAR. I'm just the hopeful kind, taking it.
happen to be in Germany. Thank you so much for coming out on a Tuesday. A tu it's Tuesday, right? Yes. Tuesday, a Tuesday gig in the U.S. would be like grasping for like air. So this is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, another hand for Jedi and George. Uh, we met for the first time tonight. So that was also fun. <laughs> Uh, this is a song that's on my latest release called Was It Love. The record's called The Bargain, but the song is called Was It Love. And it's kind of, I think it, I'm discovering, I think it's kind of a girl thing. Not, uh, not to say that guys can't relate to this. I hope you do. But, <laughs> but this, is, um, this is sort of about the journey of, um, of learning to accept yourself and love yourself for who you are. And, um, and uh, uh, so this is sort of a love song that I wrote uh, to myself. Oh, was it love? <laughs> was it love I was always searching for? Searching for love that I was always searching
People keep asking for blues music. I don't know if it's that like blues is popular here or if people just hear blues in my music, but um, I, I, I'm trying to tailor my set. I'm here for you. <laughs> Whatever you need. Um, so this is a bit of a deranged love song. Called Best Friends.
him if he'd come sing a song, play a song with me that he's never heard. And uh, something tells me he's going to kill it in a good way. That's a good word in the U.S. That uh, means he's going to do a really good job. <laughs> um, I feel like, is there a weird feedback? So um, I'm in a, 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 over the years, I've been in many um, songwriting groups, which is sort of like friends will get together, songwriting friends will get together and we'll start a, a small group of five or seven people. And we have to write a song every week and turn it in. And it's just sort of a way to keep each other accountable to be writing songs, which is you know, more or less our job. And you would think that we wouldn't need like extra motivation to do it, but so it goes. Um, and I, my, you know, I'm like the worst person at this game ever. I'm in a songwriting group right now, and I think we've been doing it for like two months. So eight songs should have been done, and I think I've done three so far. So that gives you a little insight into my <laughs> procrastination. But um, this song came from one of those songwriting groups, and the sheer pressure of having a song due at midnight, and I was flying home to Colorado. I'm from Denver, Colorado in the US, which is like right, sort of in the middle of the country. Um, and I was flying back from California at 10 p.m. and my song was due at the night and I was singing into my phone into a, a completely full flight, like whispering as quietly as I could the song that I was furiously trying to write so that when I got home I could uh, turn it into something and anyway. Usually all the songs are just crap. But um, this one kind of stuck, and <laughs> it's in C. It's in C. It's in C. It's a good story. <laughs> um, and it's called To Make Me Fall in Love. Don't always curse to me. Knows my favorite song to sing, and I often hear him whistling. Whenever I hear him, he knows I'm just an alright. Must be his skills of keeping.
going back to the U.S. to do a tour that I've been doing for the last six years, um, which is to play in maximum state security prisons in the state of Pennsylvania, which, as you can imagine, is a very crazy experience. Um, usually they're men's prisons, and it's like 200 men in their uniforms, and then me, and then I always bring a band with me. And we play a very upbeat, like, rockin' set. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, but it's amazing how doing that for the last six years has influenced my songwriting. <laughs> because now, I always, when I'm writing songs, I'm like, ah, I can't play that in prison. Or, like, if I have a, a lyric that's a little awkward, I sort of mumble over it, you know, in front of them. Because... Anyway, um, the, I was. This song came about last year when I was, you know, it, it, every year I try to write new songs or at least play new covers because, unfortunately, I, you see the same guys every year, <laughs> so you wanna <laughs> you wanna give them a new show, <laughs> and um, and so I was trying to write some upbeat kind of soul groove songs. Um, for that demographic, and I wrote this one, and it was not appropriate for prison, so it became just a Megan Burt song, because the lyrics are, you're not the only one dying for change, and I felt like, I can't, I can't, I can't sing that to 200 inmates and, and go home at night. Um, <laughs> this song really came about from a relationship perspective of just feeling like you're talking to a wall with your partner. I'm sure none of you know what that feels like. Uh, anyway, this is called Not the Only One. I see 
before you came or hopefully will after um, this video will probably pop up um, this is a, a song that um, uh, uh, was sort of like a dream come true gig it's kind of one of those gigs where like I hope that I haven't plateaued in my career you know already <laughs> it's like winning a Grammy too early or something um, <laughs> Uh, I was asked last year to perform with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. They um, took uh, a set of my songs and wrote parts for the orchestra, and um, and I got to wear a big gown and um, have this massive wall of sound behind me. It was I couldn't tell whether I should faint or run, but it was just like so much happening. <laughs> uh, it's hard to explain what, what kind of experience that is, but. We captured one of the songs from the set and put it online and it's called Anchor. So please pretend that the Colorado Symphony is just behind me tonight. <laughs> it will sound so much better. <laughs> Yeah. 
in your week and I just think you might need a little a little scoop in the butt to help you get it through get through the week um, so um, I'm gonna play you my favorite Tom Waits song are, you, are there any Tom Waits fans oh good I think this is a perfectly written song I wish I had written it <laughs> <laughs> this is called Picture in a Frame. Sun come up, it was blue and gold. Sun Ah. Uh. 
So please don't underestimate how important it is that you're here and how grateful that we are. Um, thank you to Songs and Whispers and Heiko for setting up these very fancy lights. <laughs> are they fancy? There's like 10 of them. I feel like I'm on a TV show. And Jenna and George, thank you very much. Great set. Um, Jenna and I both have records and you know, you could just buy 50 tonight. <laughs> And then we wouldn't have to worry about selling any more for the rest of this tour. <laughs> Give you a good deal. Neither one of us would be upset about that. It's like black market CD sales, you know? eBay is calling. Um, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> this is a song called Gonna Be Loving You. Um, I also have a mailing list. This is my third time to Germany, and um, I, would, I seem to come back every year um, because of the people and also because of the glue vine. So, you know, a girl's got to have her things. Apparently that's mine. Um, so please consider signing up on the email list, and I can tell you when I'm back next year. It'll be around Christmas time. <laughs> Gonna be loving.
or something with your bones. 